Back here on Sportsline, big day today. MLS likely coming tomorrow to Nashville. Announcement happening with the MLS commissioner, the mayor, the governor, and the Nashville Organizing Committee tomorrow afternoon. That will be an even bigger day in Nashville history. You got Pro Bowl announcements. You got a huge game this weekend for the Titans. Preds leading the Jets right now 2-1 to one in the second period over at Bridgestone Arena, trying to increase their lead in the Central Division and the Western Conference. One other kind of interesting story today that I know a lot of former Tennessee Vol fans will be interested in. Lane Kiffin signed a new 10-year deal at Florida Atlantic today. Probably a lot of people think he won't be along that around that long down there because of the success he's had. They won 10 games. They're up by three touchdowns in a bowl game tonight over Akron. What he did in year one down there was simply remarkable, and he is widely considered one of the best offensive minds in the country and maybe mature enough now to really be in charge of a big-time program. I think he's learned a lot from his days at Tennessee and at USC. So I don't think anybody believes he's going to be around for 10 years, but an interesting show of commitment today by him and backing it up tonight on the football field with a huge lead right now over Akron. Back to the Titans, though, who get set for essentially a must-win game on Sunday against the Rams. Noon kickoff at Nissan Stadium. Thanks in part to losing what was a must-win game against, at the time, a 3-10 and 49ers team on Sunday. And I think, and I wrote this on Newstown5.com, go check out the full story there because I dive into it more. But essentially, late in the game, you're going to remember it for Jimmy Garoppolo, as a previous caller said, and how great he was in that game and how much he just dissected the Titans defense and he did final drive three huge chunk plays to get them in field goal range for Robbie Gold to hit the game winner but what I'm going to remember that game for is the play call and the decision making of the Titans up front before then when they had third and two on their possession and they call for a run play Marcus Mariota actually suggested the play so he was on board for it and then given an opportunity to get out of it, they didn't. So against single coverage, they didn't audible and pass. They went with the run and got stuffed. And they were forced to kick a field goal, which gave a minute and seven seconds left to Jimmy Garoppolo. In essence, that play call took the game out of the hands of your best player, Marcus Mariota, and put it in the hands of the 49ers quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, and he made them pay with that final drive. And to me, the NFL is a quarterback league, folks. It comes down to quarterbacks more times than not. And so if you have a quarterback that you believe in at the end of the game on the field and he has a chance to win it for you, I think you feel pretty good about your chances and his chances of going down and doing just that. And on Sunday, the Titans said, we're going to go with the running game on third and two. We're going to do the less risky thing, the conservative thing, knowing we have a field goal essentially in the bag, as good as Ryan Suckup has been, and we're going to put our defense back out on the field. And by doing that, they took the ball out of Marcus Mariota's hands and they put it in the hands of the 49ers quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, and he beat him. And that, to me, is a mistake that if you look back at the end of the season, maybe one that is a dear mistake that cost them in a big way. We'll get to that story in just a second. But first, let's go back to the phones and say hello to David. David, good evening. You're next up here on Sportsline. Um, yes, uh, I have three issues. Um, number one, I do not think that Marcos Marietta agreed agreed to the run in the third and two. I think he just didn't want to ruffle any feathers by, by saying no. You know, being the type of you know, with the type of character he has. Number two, um, you know, number two, you know, it doesn't make any sense, you know, for all, for most of the secondary players to rush on the quarterback and leave the center of the field wide open for the tight end of the San Francisco 49ers to just be there yep. and catch an open ball. That doesn't make any sense. No, it was a breakdown in coverage. It was a complete breakdown in coverage on, I, I, I think the play you're referring to on the final drive, but they had a few of those against the tight ends all day on Sunday. They had a real issue covering tight ends, and most of them were just simple breakdowns in coverage. No, I don't think you said breakdown. I think 
the, all they need to do is to make sure they mark each of the titans they have. Just mark them. You know. Well, right, but the problem was they didn't know which linebacker was supposed to do it. They were confused on w- what it was supposed to be. And in a lot of cases, I mean, the one on the final drive in particular, they ran the same coverage on the play directly before it, and they executed it right there. And then on the next play, they didn't, and they left him wide open. That type of stuff is mind-boggling, I know, to the coaching staff and should be to everybody at home as well. But that's what it was. It was just a simple breakdown. There was supposed to be somebody on him and running with him. They just didn't communicate who that guy was supposed to be correctly, and they left him wide open. Okay. Okay. On my, on my, third, co- my third comment, third comment is on the MLS. You know, initially, initially, initially the, the city we are – we are planning. We are planning to start a developmental league, you know, using the first Tennessee Park. Right. However, however, even though it is not all that good, we have an unused stadium. First Tennessee Park is a baseball. Is a baseball park. Sure. Have an unused stadium, which is called Greer Stadium. Well, I, I mean, from everything I've heard, they're planning on tearing down Greer Stadium at some point here, and it's and it's in terrible shape right now because of that. I know, I know that, but it's got. It just, you know, it wouldn't take an arm and a leg. It wouldn't take an arm and a leg, you know, to bring it up to something for a developmental league. So, so you want them to turn Greer Stadium into the soccer stadium? Developmental league. They were planning to use the first Tennessee Park. Yeah, and that's where they are going to use it. Yes. I mean, it's just a much nicer space, and it's I probably... I know it's a much nicer space, but then, but then, you know, why do you, why do you, turn, why do you want to turn a stadium into a residential property? It doesn't make any sense. Well, uh, I mean, I'm not a city planner. I appreciate the call, David. I don't know why they want to get rid of Greer, Greer Stadium. It obviously isn't the minor league park anymore, and nobody's going there, nobody's using it right now, and so they view that property, which is very close to downtown, as prime real estate to turn it into something else, and I don't have a big problem with that. I think First Tennessee Park is going to be a really fun place to have this developmental team play. It's going to give an extra use for that stadium. It's going to get people excited before the fairground stadium is built and before we move an MLS team in there. I think it's a great idea, personally. And frankly, if the MLS wants Nashville to speed it up, I think there's a possibility that they might be ready, not by 2018, obviously, but I think there's a chance they might be ready to play by 2019. And if we have to play a year in First Tennessee Park in kind of a reduced capacity setting or whatever, I I think that could be kind of fun to get things going. But we'll see. Like I said, a lot of details like that will come out later. But I do know there have been some discussions about that because the Miami expansion bid that was already rewarded, they're behind schedule there. They're not ready to play. Los Angeles is coming into the league this year. Miami was supposed to, and it's not ready. So... Perhaps an opportunity for Nashville, which has already been awarded the bid or will be tomorrow, for the next wave of expansion to step up in the process and come in even earlier than they were expected. Back to the phones we go. Let's say hello to Adam. Adam, you're next up here on Sportsline. Hey, I appreciate you taking me, man. Hey, uh, I'm part of the uh, frustrated group of Titans fans out there, equally as excited about the Predators, but just frustrated group of Titans fans. And, you know, I, I listen to these sports talk shows all the time and what you keep hearing over and over is uh, we're not utilizing Mariota the correct way you gotta fire Robisky and you know all I hear when I hear that because number one I think Titans fans are spoiled really and so they don't really understand what adversity is supposed to look like and if you keep starting with new coaching staffs over and over again you're just killing a quarterback development and you know I think Marcus he showed a lot yesterday or um, on Sunday I think the biggest problem we got right now is if you give Jimmy G who's been in the place for four weeks almost 400 yards passing well you got to start right there you can't just keep looking at the offense because we're not scoring like the Pats so I, I don't think the Dick LeBeau defense and I know I've heard you talk about it a little, but I don't think the Dick LeBeau defense is necessarily equipped to our players. I think he had Palomalu and all these awesome safeties that could cover one week linebackers couldn't cover. 
And so, they're, you know, they're constantly blitzing all different angles, but you don't have linebackers that can play like that. That's the biggest issue right now. You can't keep just doing whatever you want to on defense and expecting the defense to be able to keep up. I mean, that, was a, that wasn't a great offense, and we made them look really good. No, they, lo- they looked incredible, and Jimmy Garoppolo looked like a Hall of Famer in his third start with the team. Adam, thanks for the call. The, the interesting thing to me, and I, I've talked about this a lot, is it's it's been one side or the other. It, it hasn't been the same thing. It hasn't been Dick LeBeau's defense all year. They've largely bailed the Titans off or out when the Titans' offense has struggled this season. They allowed one touchdown, one, in the two-game swing to the West Coast, and they went 0-2. One touchdown allowed, and they go 0-2 in those two games. I mean, that should be good enough of the performance. They weren't great against San Francisco, gave up six field goals, obviously. But that should be good enough to get you wins. But the offense wasn't good enough until the second half of the San Francisco game. The problem is they can't get it going together. When the defense has been great this year, the offense has largely struggled. Finally, the offense gets going on Sunday in San Francisco, and the defense has one of its worst performances of the year. You talk all the time about getting a team to play in concert with one another and having the offense feed off the defense and vice versa. They've been diametrically opposed. You can only get one unit, seemingly, going at one time for the Titans this year, and that is a huge problem for them. I don't blame Dick LeBeau a ton. I do blame the secondary on Sunday. That was a woeful performance. And offensively, like I said before, some of it goes to Terry Rubisky. Some of it goes to the play calling. But some of it goes to the fact that this offensive line hasn't been nearly as good of a a year ago. The running game hasn't been nearly as good as it was a year ago. Mariota hasn't been as good. Delaney Walker hasn't been as good. Your wide receiving core has been about as good, but that frankly isn't very good. It just, nobody has taken a step forward in that unit. Last year, it seemed like every position on the team, if you would have compared them year over year from 2015 to 2016, every position would have gotten marks higher than the year before. And this year, as I said earlier on the program, who do you do that for this year? Kevin Byard, that's a shoe in Wesley Woodyard, he's another one. After that, who definitively on the Titans team, individually, has played better this season than they did a year ago? I'm not sure there is anybody else. And when that's the story of your, of your 22 guys uh, starting on the two sides of the ball, when 20 of them are having sort of no progression or maybe even regression from the previous season, you're not going to take the strides you want. Now, the question is, why is that happening? How much of it is the offense? How much of it is the scheme? People are upset about some of the bland nature of things, and I get that. It comes back to execution to a degree, but one thing I want to ask about Marcus Mariota is, as you look at this and the smash mouth football, I think it was great, almost imperative, for them to take the steps they took last year and over these two years, where they've now won 17 games. The previous two years, they won five. That is obviously progress, regardless of what happens here. Obviously progress. But here's the bottom line. If you want to win in this league, with the high-powered offenses that are out there and the quarterbacks that are slinging it around, like a Tom Brady or a Drew Brees or an Aaron Rodgers or, heck, Jimmy Garoppolo with the 49ers, can you be smash-mouth first? If you want to truly compete and win divisions and go to the playoffs and win there and contend for a Super Bowl, can you be a smash-mouth run-first offense? Or at some point, do they have to give it to Marcus Mariota and kind of put it on him? And then I asked this question last night as well. Is Marcus Mariota ready to do that? I mean, Sunday, that situation, it was there for him to audible out of that play if he wanted and have single coverage and basically say, okay, the game is on the line. I want this. I'm going to win the game for us right here. I think a lot of those other quarterbacks I just mentioned, I think they do that in that situation. Mariota stuck with the play call. And, and that's, that's okay. Okay. But at some point, to be an elite quarterback in this league, you want the elite moments. You want the big moments to step up and be a part of that. And we didn't see that from Mariota on Sunday. 
All right, we got to take a break here. We'll come back. More phone calls, 737-7767, the number, and more on the Titans right after this here on Sports Law on News Channel 5 Plus.